Hello there and welcome people of YouTube to another Vatsim flight. Today I'll be flying inside of the country of Slovakia between its two largest cities and which also conveniently lie on opposite sides of the country. It's a fairly small country, it's only about a 160 nautical mile flight, which means we won't be able to cruise at a very high altitude, but it still should be kind of interesting. The weather forecast uh, for both airports and the en route is pretty good. We have uh, very little wind and very good uh, visibility conditions, practically clear skies, so that would not be a problem. We should get some pretty good shots. My last vi uh, the reason why I'm making this video is because my last Vatsim video kind of sucked and there were many mistakes and so this time I promise there are going to be far fewer of them even though we're only going to be dealing with uh, one controller since uh, there's only going to be one controller online which is the uh, Bratislava Center so we're going to be getting clearance delivered, ground taxi, uh, t tower and uh, departure and uh, arrival uh, departure and approach uh, clearances from the same controller so let's get this show on the road without any further ado. Let's hop straight into the flight planning so that we don't have to waste a bunch of time uh, talking about stuff. I'm going to be talking you through the entire flight uh, so that we get can get that stuff out of the out of the way and we don't have to waste waste a bunch of time in the cockpit on it. I don't know if I if I am going to go into much detail. Most of these things I brief to myself very quickly in the head. So uh, I frequently when I fly online I don't have much time to do a formal briefing with uh, with you guys slowly in in order. So let's look at the en route chart. Uh, we're going to be starting over on the western portion of Slovakia. Uh, in at the Bratislava airport and the departure is going to take us out to the NIT VOR from there we're going to be taking just a single airway which is airway A which is airway A42 over uh, the SLC VOR down to Dedis and that's going to be the initial fix uh, in the approach in the arrival into the uh, Kosice airport which is the uh, our destination uh, the Approacher, the approach controller is going to give us uh, vectors starting even before that is. We're going to get vectored out uh, a little bit over northern Hungary there and then back into the airport. The arriving runway at, uh, at the Kosice airport is going to be runway 01, so we're going to be landing pretty much due north. So if we have a look at the parking chart at Bratislava, we are parked at stand number 9. Uh, we are going to be before engine start we're going to be pushing into the apron taxiway and uh, then starting the engines on a turboprop this small you wouldn't want to start the engines before the push because it's kind of dangerous for people to approach the airplane uh, after the engines have been started then we're going to be taxiing out over the apron and turning right to taxi on taxiway foxtrot the departure is going to give us a uh, take off from runway 04. Initially I thought we were going to depart from runway 0, uh, sorry, uh, w the departure is going to give us a departure out of runway 31. Initially I thought we were going to depart out of runway 04 because I had a look at the weather online and the uh, latest ATIS information for Bratislava on the VACC Slovakia website but unfortunately it appears that while I was setting the airplane up the weather has changed and the departure controller has decided to start using a runway 31 for departures so if you look at the taxi chart uh, this is sort of a northbound ish look the chart before that was a little bit slanted to the left so we will be starting down we'll be starting at the apron taxiing out across the apron to catch the foxtrot taxiway over to the southeast crossing runway 04 in the process we're going to get clearance for that uh, right, right away at the apron then taxiing out t all the way to the end of the runway there to the holding point and then we're going to get a rolling departure so before we even reach the holding point for runway 31 we'll just get a clearance to take off from the controller we acknowledge that and do perform a rolling takeoff from the end of the runway there the runway is pretty long it's about 10,000 feet uh, which is about three kilometers uh, the beach 1900d that we'll be flying today is much uh, can take off from a much shorter field. The, the minimum takeoff field length is about 3,000 feet. We would have preferred to have sort of a taxiway that attaches to the runway about two thirds down its length. Unfortunately, the closest one there is Gulf Gulf, and that's uh, 
just pr too short for my personal comfort. We would be able to take off from that runway, but personally, I prefer to have a little bit of runway left so that I can stop and, uh, in case of a problem, investigate, uh, come to a safe stop, and we don't have to commit to take off on a, on a too short a runway. So the departure is going to take us on the runway 31. Uh, the departure procedure is going to be the NIT-8 Alpha departure, uh, which means a straight out climb to 900 feet AMSL, uh, MSL, then turn right to intercept the 264 radial into the NIT VOR. And since uh, radials are measured outbound from VORs, and we're going to be flying inbound to the VOR, we'll be flying the reciprocal heading, which is uh, 083. We'll, we'll be having that set up on our uh, NAV1 radio. Uh, during the climb, the controller is actually going to take me over into his hands and uh, give me a direct straight to the NIT VOR. There's going to be fairly little traffic on today at the airport, so we'll be able to fly direct rather than having to intercept the radio. For the arrival at uh, Košice, we're going to be uh, we're going to get a, an arrival clearance before even reaching our an arrival fix, which would be Dedis. So that means we'll be arriving from the west here and uh, descending down south, uh, southbound into the uh, into Hungary, over to the column, which is the initial an uh, initial approach fix on the runway zero one ILS zero one procedure into runway zero one at Kosice. Once at column, they'll give us a clearance to turn left to 040 and to intercept the localizer from the ILS. The, during the entire procedure, of course, down to column, we'll be descending down to 3,000 feet, which is, the, uh, which is a suitable altitude for intercepting the uh, localizer and then the glide slope. Uh, and if we look over on the, IL, on the approach chart here for uh, runway 01 ILS procedures, uh, the way I have this sort of marked out so that you guys can see the way the, the primary things that I pay attention to. There are many more things on the chart, of course, that you want to consult and you want to understand what's happening. But this is these are the way this these are the sort of quick glance items that I for, that I check whenever I uh, have to do a quick check on the chart. So I start my flow over on the upper right corner. So I check that we have the chart for the correct airport, the right procedure, and that we are not out of date. Then I check my frequencies, make sure I understand where the ADIS is, uh, on, what, on what frequency I can get it, who I'm going to be tuning to so I can pre-tune my radios. As I said this time, we're not going to be tuning radios because we're going to be just with a single controller. But usually when you would want to, when you approach into an airport, it's prudent to always pre-tune as many frequencies ahead of time into your standbys so that you don't have to then fiddle with the knobs while you're flying the airplane. Uh, then I go over to the left, check the aerodrome elevation and the runway threshold elevation. So we're going to be landing at 750 feet uh, MSL elevation. That's important for setting into your pressurization control so that you can you can repressurize the uh, the, air the aircraft correctly, the aircraft cabin. Then we go down and look at the localizer frequency, which our localizer here is going to be uh, KE or Kilo Echo, the localizer frequency is 109.5. Going further down, uh, I have a look at the initial uh, the initial and the final and an intermediate fix. The initial approach fix, which is column, then an, in the intermediate fix, and then the final approach fix. And I also check the uh, runway uh, front course, so I know what to set up on my uh, localizer, on my localizer needle there. Further down on the same chart, it didn't fit into a single screen. Further down on the same chart, we have a vertical profile, so that means a side view of the approach. We there we check primarily the transition altitude, so we're going to be transitioning at level eight to zero down to to low to the local altimeter. Then we check that the we are going to be on the profile. So if we are flying the standard ILS procedure here, we'd be flying at two thousand five hundred feet inbound to the final approach fix uh, and then starting on starting on the descent uh, the controller here is going to give us a little bit higher the altitude so we're going to be fly, flying inbound on 3000 at 3000 feet so we would expect to intercept the glide slope a little bit further from the DME as you can see on the lower 
a portion of the vertical profile. There's a chart indicating how many miles from the DME would be, so approximately nine and a half nautical miles is where we would usually intercept the glide slope. But we'll be flying, as I said, at two at three thousand feet, so we'll intercept the glide slope a little bit further uh, away from the airport, approximately uh, eleven nautical miles. Um, then we want to pay particular. Uh, we want to pay particular attention to the missed approach procedure, which is up on the right-hand side. So it's going to be a straight-out climb to Tango Papa or 4.9 DME from uh, the localizer, so Kilo Echo. Then turning right to uh, to the Kilo Echo NDB and climbing to 3,500 feet. So that's going to be our uh, procedure. We want to be setting that up into our altitude selectors and make sure we understand what what's going to be done there. We have a Garmin 530 simulated in the cockpit, so I'm going to be setting up a, a programmatic procedure in the Garmin. So that means that when I, when I need to do a missed approach here, I don't have to fly the missed approach manually. I can just turn uh, hit the suspend button on the Garmin and just turn it over to the autopilot, which will make us uh, which will uh, make us fly the uh, the missed approach procedure. An additional note uh, down there are two tables that I pay particular attention to, which is the minimums. We are in a we are a category B airplane, which means we'll be approaching at about 110, 120 knots. And the decision height for us, uh, the OCH uh, row there, says that we would uh, expect to land. We we would be expected to have 157 uh, feet minimums on the approach. So that's what we're going to be setting up inside of the radar altimeter there. Uh, the approach, uh, as I said, the weather is going to be very good, so we're not even going to require these minimums. But we are always, uh, we ha always have to set these up inside of the uh, radar altimeter so that we know when to be stable on the approach and when to really set ourselves up for the final landing uh, procedures. The last uh, table that I tend to look at is on the ro lower right. Uh, that's the uh, approximate timing we would expect. So if we were flying, and that's approximately the speed we'll be flying. If we were flying at about 122 knots on the approach, we would expect approximately two minutes and 24 seconds to elapse between the final approach point and the middle marker. So but if by about two and a half minutes we do not hear the middle marker, we would know that either the glide slope is giving bad readings or we are just uh, getting some sort of uh, false readings from the navigation, we should probably do a missed approach and check again with the with ATC and figure out what's going on. As I said, the weather is very good today and we won't have to do that. So if you look at the uh, landing portion of, so of things, I managed to com almost completely nail it into the middle of the touchdown zone, which is over, this, this is sort of a side view, so north is over to the right uh, of the because it's an airport which only has one runway, which is a 01 slash 19er. I'll be landing on the 01 side, and I hit, uh, managed to almost hit it directly inside of the touchdown zone, in the middle of the touchdown zone. I try to get the Foxtrot exit, but unfortunately, uh, I it's a very it'd be a very short uh, breaking. Uh, effect there to hit Foxtrot and in the end I, I just uh, leave it be and I continue on down the runway. A controller then gives me a taxi instruction to head over Alpha and down over to the apron to the terminal and a stand of my choice. There's fairly small, fairly little traffic here at Koshitsa so we are going to be pretty much alone at the airport. Well, not pretty much, we're going to be completely alone at the airport, so we are going to be uh, able to select our parking spot uh, completely by our own choosing. So that means in order to taxi on Alpha, they they want us to taxi down the runway uh, and then make a turnout left on Alpha. And once we are at the apron on Alpha, we're just going to be choosing... A, I'm, I've decided for the uh, parking spot number 5, for, the stand, for stand number 5, it's just a... Uh, usually we'd probably want to park at a different position, but as I said, I'm going to be completely alone at the airport, so I can really decide to make my uh, any pick any parking spot I like. Once again, I apologize for the audio quality. As I said before, the headset that I use for VATSIM is kind of lower quality, so there's going to be a bunch of noise on the line, but you should be able to understand me. I'm also going to be adding subtitles for whatever is being spoken on the radio so that you guys don't have to discern from the noise. 
Okay, so enough talking, let's go fly some planes. Hello folks, so we're inside the cockpit and we are ready to depart. I have the passengers loaded, I've conducted the walk around and everything seems to be in order. The uh, GPS is programmed so we can start setting up the airplane and running the initial checks. So first I'm going to be setting up, uh, since I have power on the airplane, I'm going to be setting up my trimmers here. Uh, the engines are not started yet, of course. We will need to ask ABC for stirrup and pushback clearance. And we're going to be starting the engines later on uh, once, we, once we push back into the taxiway, which is just behind us. We are located on stand number 9. And we are, uh, I expect a departure on runway 04, so it's going to be a taxi on Alpha, then Delta to the 04 runway ending point, and then departure out of there. Uh, we're going to be taking the November India Tango 7 Zulu departure, and uh, that's already, uh, actually that's not programmed into the uh, GPS here, so let's get that on the way. It, November India Tango 7 Zulu is the straight out climb over to the uh, to the Oscar Kilo Romeo NDB and from there it's going to be a turn right so we're going to go over here into the route plan hit that uh, and spin this around for, an for Oscar Kilo Romeo that's the correct one and we want to grab the NDB not the localizer Okay, so the departure route is complete. From there on, it's just a straight out uh, flight directly to the VOR. So the route is complete, and we're going to be departing in about 15 minutes. So I'm going to be calling up ADC, giving them a blast, and getting our departure clearance. So I'll switch the frequency here. I already have it uh, tuned in. So 126.475. Well, it would be helpful if I hit the button, right? Bratislava radar November six one eight Alpha Bravo is at stand number nine requesting departure clearance to Kostica. Uh, November 618, uh, Bravo, Vesvalida, uh, good evening, sir. Uh, Special destination, uh, Kosice, uh, runway uh, 31, November, India, Tango 8, Alpha departure, initial climb of 5,000 feet, squawk 1, 1, 2, 3, information Delta, QNH, 1038. Clear to the, Kosh uh, to the Kosice airport via the, uh, Nitra 8 Alpha departure, initial climb 5000, to departure runway will be 31, uh, squawking 1123 and QNH 1038, November 618 Alpha Bravo. Number 618 uh, Alpha Bravo, we make correct uh, server proof and uh, call for push. Roger that, we would prefer push first, start up later. Thanks, 8 Alpha Bravo. Okay, so 5,000 set in the al altimeter, uh, setting the uh, uh, transponder on going to be 1123. That's set. The initial. I need to modify my flight plan because apparently the ATIS information that was on the VACC website was not accurate, so we need to modify that. So we want to remove Oscar Kilo Romy out of the flight plan and have a look. at It's going to be a Oscar Bravo NDB initially and from there on to Ju Juliet Alpha November VOR from there uh, November India Tango VOR so we need to set that in so Oscar Bravo that's correct and we don't want the localizer we want the NDB here in Slovakia uh, then we want the Juliet Alpha November VOR Yes, it's a VOR in Slovakia, and the rest of it is okay. So we have that all set. We need to set up our pressurization. Yeah, 
3065 is set up, cross check the ulti altimeter, still reading the same thing, and this is field elevation here, so that's okay. And after this, we need to set up our pressurization, which is going to be 210, if I remember correctly. I need to check with my flight plan, make sure I didn't make any mistakes there. Squawk box, send flight plan, and we filed for 210, that's indeed correct. Let's get rid of the oaks. And we'll be running uh, a bunch of quick tests here on the electricals. So check the fire systems and the backups, and the detection and the backups. Everything's lighting up good. Overspeed and stall warning test is okay. Uh, set the temperature up, the bleed air valves open, and the environmental mode to auto. And the down here, everything's okay. Uh, we we, we need to so, 15,000 pounds, V rotate is going to be 110, actually let me check that, make sure I'm not making mistakes, so 15,000, uh, it's going to be approximately, yes, 107 on V1, 110 V rotate, and 118 on V2. If My mouse is getting me, giving me kind of hard, kind of trouble there. Hope I'm not running out of battery power there. That'd be unfortunate. And the initial heading is gonna be three one zero. So three one zero is set. Actually, what are we? Uh, here I shall go with the top zero and now run the turn for Foxtel Delta. Bravo. Uh, and we filed for departure time. We still got 10 minutes, which is okay. Uh, uh, we'll uh, be done by that, and by that time. So plus 1800. And we want to. What else can we check here? As you can see, I have the electricals going, even though my engines are now running and the generators are, of course, not online. The reason for that is, is because I have a GPU out here, so we will not run out of power, hopefully. And I need to switch my mouse battery here, because if this thing dies on me while in flight, that's going to be unfortunate. Okay, hopefully this battery is going to be doing better. Okay, and we are pretty much set up here. I'm going to be running the before take uh, before uh, copied preparation and before start checklists. So fuel panel uh, test is not simulated. Uh, parking brake is set actually. Fuel panel test is not simulated. Aircraft documentation is on board. Oxygen system is not simulated. Battery is on. Fuel quantity is checked. We're running 1,500 pounds. Uh, left, actually, the enunciators will need to be checked. There we go. Uh, one eight and eight the eight enunciators eight are eight good. Contact, uh, good evening, sir. Uh, continue to Circuit over. breakers are all in. Uh, From the static uh, compass uh, is okay. Uh, Engine anti is not going to be coming up because we're not doing a walk around. Landing gear and L turn are good. Down tree green. Uh, master panel on the theaters check. Radar is uh, going to be coming off. Power levers are idle. Conditions uh, prop fully forward. Conditions idle. Trimmers are set and checked. Uh, Stall warning is checked. Battery yeah. is gonna yeah, stay on because we have conducted the walk around and cockpit preparation has been completed so we want to turn on the fasten seat belt signs we want to turn on the beacon and then we want to conduct the uh, before takeoff checklist so batteries on cabin signs are set pressure is set bleed air valves are open altimeters are set and cross check takeoff data is set and cr set and uh, checked uh, departure briefing is con performed, cargo and passenger doors, well we can't see the doors and they will light up over here on the announcer, so they're not open, that's checked. 
and the closed tail bar is removed startup clearance uh, we're gonna be obtaining it uh, well we've already obtained a startup clearance because but we first need to push back and uh, after that the yeah the beacon and the area beacon is on and the pushback area appears to be clear so we can uh, that's the before start checklist complete and we can start the pushback uh, let's Unfortunately, we will not be able to turn off the avionics now because I need to have the radios working, but that's okay. I won't be able to turn off the avionics as we need customary, so I'm going to call the pushback truck. I have the parking brake set. Yep, the parking brake is set. When we call the pushback truck, we want to phase yeah, yeah, nose right, oh. and we want to push back about 70 meters. Uh, right. uh, so let's push uh, 70 meters, should be okay. And yes, okay, they, they're getting yeah. lost there, so external power is coming off. Oh, and here's the pushback truck coming in. Okay, the pushback truck is ready, so we'll be giving them a call and get us uh, pushed back. Bratislava Ray. Uh, Ryanair 2 Echo. Uh, Ryanair 2 Echo November, uh, Line of Runway 31. Wind is from 300 degrees, 0, 05 knots, uh, 3 for takeoff, and the code Echo. November. Press level radar, uh, November 6, one Alpha Bravo is ready for push. November 6, uh, 8, Alpha Bravo, Roger, uh, push, uh, facing, uh, to Foxtrot. Pushback approved, facing to Foxtrot, 8, Alpha Bravo. So they want to have us facing Foxtrot, which is to our right, that's correct. Okay, so we have everything going and we can start to push back so oops there we go breaks off and let's push back see how that works let's see how accurately i got it Well, not really very accurately. I thought we shot a bit. Okay, nobody saw that. Well, we're, s we're still kind of on the pavement there, so that's alright. Okay, pushbacks dismissed. And we'll soon we're ready to obtain the startup clearance, so I'm going to be starting the engines now, so. Uh, uh, startup sequence is going to be right down left. So auto ignition is on. There's twelve percent solo idle. Watching the ITT. Uh, November 618 Alpha Bravo, uh, when ready, taxi to Runway 31 via Foxtrot, uh, Gross Runway 0 for approved. When ready, taxi to Runway 31 via Foxtrot, and can you repeat that, repeat that last sequence for 8 Alpha Bravo? Uh, 618 Alpha Bravo, uh, Gross Runway uh, 0 for approved. Crossing runway 04 approved, 8 Alpha Bravo. Okay, so I actually got that wrong. Wow. Okay, never mind. Let's continue with the startup sequence. I'll program the GPS on la later on. Okay, so there we go. High idle. Can turn that off. Let's turn on the generator. And AC. 170 and from present position, we are having. Fairly high loads there, so. We would actually want to have it. Let's 
see if we give it a little bit of gas if the load goes down. Actually, I'm going to have to turn off the avionics for the second start because we have a very high load on the generator, so here it goes, quickly. Hopefully nobody notices. Low idle. There we go, 45%. Bring the other turbines back to low idle. Auto ignition off for now. Generator AC con inverter. And we have good electrics and the load is good. So avionics coming back on and now we are happy with the loads. Okay, so we have the battery charging. Actually, plus 30 amps, that's okay. We have everything else on. We want to turn on rudder boost, and we want to test auto fed, actually, pito heat. Pito heat and the stall warning. Testing the auto feather. Auto feather is okay. Manual feather. Manual feathering is okay as well. So we have that going. Let's turn on the radar. Everything else is okay. Can turn on the furnace, although it's not required. Arming auto feather. And we are ready to start taxiing. So they want us to taxi over onto Foxtrot, then cross runway 04, and I need to fetch the correct departure because I programmed in the wrong one. We want to grab the, yeah, the NIT 8 Alpha departure which does not contain which is just a straight turnout onto a radial of 264 to NIT so we want to scroll this knob over here delete that and delete that as well then we want to tune in NIT into the VORD one radio so it's just 116 decimal 5 and we want to be heading towards it on a back course to the 264, so 83 is the reciprocal there. 83 and 264 on the reciprocal. And our takeoff runway is correct, 310. So that's okay, Put you, putting the turbines into high idle. And we can start our taxi after we complete the before taxi checklist before taxi checklist. Inverters are now checked. Avionics is on, radar GPS is on, stay by her stand by horizon power is okay, flight director test is not simulated, nav eights and course is set. In fact is it? There we go. Now we now we are picking up the NITBOR. And environmental mode is okay. So I'm gonna mute or tear, turn down the airplane a little bit more. Taxi light on and flaps coming down parking brake off. Okay, so they wanted us to probably taxi over here on the apron, so I'm gonna taxi here out to Foxtra. We're we still connected? Yeah, we're still connected. We should be having some wind out of the left, and while taxiing, I'm going to be starting on the uh, before takeoff checklist to the line. So, flight instruments check. There's actually flight controls. I'm kind of slaloming here a little bit with my feet. That's the wind. Got some static scenery here at the airport. And a 767 freighter. Okay, better range for a little bit of a slowdown because we don't want to enter the, the bend there at 14 knots. Fox Stratus to our right. 
Uh, right beta. Uh, that will be with the Nano 76 type of the radar. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, please, uh, set squawk uh, 7000. So we are clear to cross runway 04 and we're going to be turning on the strobes just in case. So the strobes are over here, set them to flight and start actually once we cross the runway it's a long taxi down there. Uh, that'll be with, uh, 9, 7, 6, 5, now, uh, uh, continue at on navigation now. <laughs> And we'll be starting on the checklist uh, right after we cross. I want to be maintaining awareness while I'm crossing the runway there. And I'm going to be completing the checklists over on the straight stretch of taxiway. There's no chance of me hitting anything. So we have nothing uh, on the on that sector. No airplanes coming in that way. No airplanes coming in that way. So we're good. Taxiing at 17 knots. So that's a little fast. Going to bring the turbines back to low idle. Make sure we're not over speeding. Strips are going to be coming off again. Okay, strips coming off. And complete the checklist. So, before takeoff, checklist to the line. Engine and flight. Uh, November 618, please set squawk 1, 7, Squawk 17238 Alpha Bravo. So 1723, did I say no? Whatever. So let's complete the checklist. So uh, engine and flight instruments are checked. No flags. Auto feather uh, is armed. Manual feathering was performed. Flight controls have been checked. Flaps are set. Trimmers are set. EGPW test test is not simulated. Takeoff data is 1 V1, 107, V rotate 110, and V2 is 118. And flight director is turned on. Before takeoff checklist completed to the line. Right, Ryanair 2 November uh, descent at Poof, so you are now uh, in my space, the booth is offline, continue out of navigation and uh, select the Chitamiko and ascending, bye bye. So the departure here is going to be a turnout at 900 you, feet bye bye. MSL, <laughs> and we want to intercept the uh, 264 radial into the NIT VOR, so that's going to be okay. The max speed restriction is 205 knots. We don't need to worry about that, we're not that fast. November 618 for Bravo, Alpha Bravo, line at runway 31. Uh, wind is from 3 0 degrees, 0 5 knots, 3-4 takeoff, and 3-4 Three 3-1 three Thru line up and clear for takeoff, uh, report, report when airborne, 6 8 uh, Alpha Bravo. Okay, so we are clear to take off already, so let's bring the turbines back a little more. And uh, we might actually take the... well, we're not going to be taking any more exits, because this uh, only a long taxi now to the end of there. So let's complete the rest of the uh, items here. So auto ignition is coming off, bleed, bleed valves off, environmental mode off. We're going to be switching the uh, transponder into uh, Charlie momentarily. Bring the turbines back up because we are slowing down a little bit. Actually, we can turn on the tail flood now. It's just a pretty light at the uh, shining on the vertical stabilizer. Okay. I see the end of the approach portion. Uh, I see the end of the taxiway. So let's switch the transponder on. Transponder going to altitude mode. 
TCAS is on and the checklist. So, auto ignition is armed, engine anti ice is off, pitot heat is on, prop levers fully forward, transponder and TCAS is on and coded, bleed air valves are off, annunciators are considered, that's good, and exterior lights will be coming on. So, landing lights and strobes are coming on, the approach sector is clear. So now we want to stick the turbines back into fully forward and make sure we are getting maximum power there. So here's the whole short line for the runway. Approach sector is clear. Slow a little bit down with the beta. Line up, take off and report airborne. airborne. That's what the instructions said. Final check down the runway. Nothing coming our way. Nothing on the approach sector. Runway 31 is identified. So, lined up. And take off. Advancing power to 3,500 foot pounds. Not over the red line. Take off power is set. 80 knots. P1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. some cloud there, one degree C, so we would be probably turning on the anti-ice for that. We'll be taking that online momentarily. 400 feet, flaps up. 900 feet, we want to start our turn. Actually, I'm going to be engaging Yacht Emperor Autopilot, turning right and contact ABC. November 618 Alpha Bravo reporting airborne. Pull back power. No, no, six, uh, one eight, uh, bravo, radar contact, uh, continue climb to fly over two one zero. And uh, from present position, uh, probably direct to Sierra Lima, Charlie, you are. Continue climbing to 210 and for present position, direct to Sierra Lima, Charlie, VOR, 8 Alpha, Bravo. Okay, so they want to have us climb, so we're going to be doing that in just a short while. We need to turn on the anti ice now. So that is going to be coming out. Continue the climb, so 210. And we'll be intercepting uh, the Sierra Lima Charlie VOR, so scroll down, take a direct. From present position, switch this over to GPS and switch over to the GPS source. And continue the power, and we need to complete the takeoff checklist. So after takeoff checklist, landing gear is up, yacht amper is engaged, taxi light is off, lead air valves are coming up, open, and environmental mode is on, cabin pressure is checked, so cabin pressure is good. And after takeoff checklist complete, at 8,000 feet we'll be transitioning, so actually let's continue winding this up. 210 checked and advance the power a little bit more. You know, to advance the prop, I retarded that a little bit too much. Clear cloud, so we should overfly these guys, so anti ice can come off now. So that's okay. 210 set. We have an IAS climb now. And that's pretty much all there is to it. We want to sync up the heading. And we want to set the desired course here on the CDI. 7-6. That's set. And once we pass the transition altitude, I'll complete the climb checklist. Fasten seatbelt signs are going to be okay. 
at 10,000 feet, of course, we're going to be taking off the landing lights, so that's fine. Electrical load is okay. Inverters are good. So everything here is fine. Auto feather messages are good. That's what we expect. Uh, Double view from 965, uh, expect the runway 27 and uh, contrast Cassidy and uh, lockout runway 1034. Let's wind this up. Bumping up the power a little more. There we go. 3500 feet, foot pounds. Actually, not feet. The exterior temperature, the outside air is minus 12, so if, if there were cloud, we could expect icing conditions, but we're not. There's 8,000, so transition to 9 or 9 or Two, there we go, and two nine or nine or two. There's a lot of pressure differentials, so almost a thousand feet. And cross check at eight thousand. Eight thousand here, eight thousand on the other altimeter, so that's cross checked and climb checklist. Altimeter standard and cross checked. Actually, landing lights are going to be holding the checklist until ten thousand feet, so the checklist asks us for the Landing lights off, and we need to hold that for a little longer. Bump the power up a little more. Uh, Zamo views uh, nine hundred six five. Uh, this descent is at your discretion, and uh, uh, reports are running tight. Uh, that will be uh, 7765 uh, at your discretion and uh, report the runway inside. So we want to... I'm going to be sticking in the uh, SLC VOR into the NAV1 radio, so I'm going to wind this over to the right hand stop and going over to the next VOR, nearest VOR page and there's SLC, frequency 11400. So let's switch this over here. 114 Zero, zero, switch the VOR, there we go, SLC tuned in. So wind this back to nearest airport and back to the main nav page. 10,000 feet, so landing lights coming off. And tail flood can come off as well and complete the checklist. So climb checklist, landing and tail lights are off. Pressurization is... I can't see it. There we go, checked. Just climb is stopped and now increasing the differential. Ice protection is not required and cabin signs are going to be coming off for now. We don't need them anymore. There's no turbulence and the climb is pretty gentle, so we should be okay. Bumping the power now a little bit more. And continue the climb. little bit of the of an oscillation here in my levers. That's just a problem with the way the potentiometers measure. Measure the current passing through, so they're kind of sensitive and they can oscillate. Check the fuel. We're good on the main tanks. We should burn only about seven or eight hundred pounds for this trip. So I'm going to be checking that and monitoring it.
interesting that they told me to change the squawk code while I was there on the ground when it wasn't turned on, so I'm going to be checking with the recording, make sure I figure out whether it was I, whether I misheard the squawk instruction there or whether the controller made a mistake. It's kind of unfortunate if you miss your instructions, that's really not very good. <coughs> 13,600 feet. Bump the power a touch. We got a lot of range on the turbines still, so we should be able to climb at a fairly high rate up to about 18,000, well maybe 17,000 feet. I'm going to declutter my radar and increase the range a little bit. And I'm also going to be turning on the HSI here over to an arc mode. There's a little bit of turbulence here, but not really not much. Let's check the ground speed. Yeah, we're definitely picking up a lot of ground speed. Actually, we can slow down now to about 140 on the climb there, so stick this into vertical speed back up to 1800. Now we should slow down gently out down to about 140 indicated so that we can maximum climb performance out of the engines. Because as you know, the uh, true airspeed uh, starts to deviate more and more from your indicated the higher up you are. And uh, we don't want to be keeping keeping the same true airspeed all the way up to the through the climb because uh, the engines do not have uh, a November six one eight also gravity all for your information uh runway is used zero one increase. Roger that thank you. Six uh, paid alpha bravo. So there we go. hundred and forty. So as I was saying, uh, the further out we are, the further high up we are, uh, the more further away the true airspeed is from the indicated. And unfortunately it's the true airspeed that's uh, for the climb requirement for the engines. And this airplane does not have a lot of uh, reserve power for a fast climb, so we want to be slowing down a little bit, down to about 135 at very high altitudes. So the controller there told me what the runway and use is, which I of course know, because uh, I had a look at the ATIS uh, on the web. And Kosice has uh, an ILS procedure and run runway 01, so we're going to be using the ILS there. So IS is re engaged, altitude select nav. How far away are we? Actually, I don't know exactly, so I'm going to be programming in a uh, temporary uh, descent plan, so 3,000 feet, oh, what, yeah, it's about 3,000 feet at the airport, at the target airport, so LZKC, and we want to descend about 1,300 feet per minute, that's going to be our descent planning, so we would expect, uh, it's going to go down a little bit more, because we are we're going to be speeding up and flying at an even higher altitude than this. There we go, maxed out on the turbine RPM, so we cannot climb any faster than this. Uh, from the from here on out, uh, we are going to have to slow down our climb, but that's okay. We're pretty close to the target altitude anyway, so that's not going to be a problem. Okay, let's look outside and enjoy the scenery a little bit. Well, it's not much scenery anyway to look at. And look at, I mean, it's a flat land, flat land and. Uh, just a bunch of clouds, so... Lima, India, Bravo, Sestri, 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 Dráha 1, 9, Marka 6, Zulu Obletová, počet očné stúpanie 5000 stôp, odpovedač 1, 7, 2, 6 a okálne QNH 1, 0, 3, 6.
povolen do Prahy, dráha 1.9, Marka 6, Zú, počátek 6, Pán a little bit of turbulence going on here, but that's okay. So I'm going to be going over to the GPS and selecting an approach so that we can set that in. So we're going to be flying an ILS-01, we're going to be receiving vectors and just loading the approach for now. I'm going to see what they actually give me, I haven't, this is sort of just a provisional setting, we can change that later on. Okay, we're about to level off here. Gonna check my performance tables, make sure I know what the power setting. And at 2100, we want to be 2356 foot pounds. So level off. Auto feather can come off. I'm gonna set the cruise power in here. Information at convert, So pulling back the torque to 2356 foot pounds per torque, so 2356 foot pounds, so that's about 23 and a half. Yeah, they're about roughly like that. So equalize the turbine RPMs. Uh, that's as best as I can make it, so it's gonna have to do. And run the uh, cruise checklist. So cruise power is checked, uh, engine instruments are okay, we check those, uh, auto feather is off, and ice protection is not required. We already have the cabin signs off, so passengers can move around. Uh, we're going to be speeding up to approximately 186 indicated, probably around there, so I'm going to set that up at around here, 180 going to be setting that down for now to my stall speed, which is 105 in a clean configuration and a power off and uh, just monitor the descent so it's going to be a fairly fast trip uh, we have a lot of wind usually we would do about 250 yeah about 250 or 260 on the ground speed if we're zero uh, if there were no winds, but unfortunately, but fortunately we have a lot of wind blowing into our backs, so it's going to be a very fast trip. Going to be turning on the standby pumps to get the standby tanks over into the mains. Minus 40 degrees C outside. And once we are closer to top of descent, I'm going to re be requesting a descent from the controller if he does not give us one sooner than that. Cruise checklist is completed and next is going to be the descent checklist. So for the approach I would expect ILS-01 and that's probably what we're going to be getting. The other than that, it's pretty. It's a pretty straightforward procedure. So I'm going to be tuning the ILS localizer for tuning it into my into my radio here on the standby frequency, make sure we get that out of the way and ready to go. 
So the approach plate says it's going to be 109 decimal 9 or 109 decimal 5. Okay, so let's switch that over here. 109 decimal 5. That's the frequency of the ILS localizer at Kosice, the 01, and that's pretty much it. You know, after we are given the. Uh, uh, from the position I like to be there and sending to 3000 feet to each other. Feed the right when it was 038. There's a weather refresh going on right now. So that's why the clouds disappeared. And there was a pressure change. That's actually caused by the uh, X Squawk Box plugin downloading the current weather from Batsim. So that's why we descended. How are we doing on this descent? Uh, Lima, India, Bravo, 631, So I'm going to be asking for the descent a little bit earlier, make sure we get the clearance early on and we can set everything up. The field elevation for a landing is actually going to be... 730 and 755 so I'm gonna set that in early here so we can start the descent so that's about there Actually, let's wait a little bit longer. We are very, very fast. That's what's confusing the GPS. We'll, we'll slow down a lot more on the descent. So we'll wait until at least tag out, and after that, we'll see about the descent. Worst case is we're going to have to do a sort of a circle, maybe a hold there somewhere. Beautiful scenery. These are the elevation maps from AL Pilot X. The HDV threes, so not the super high def ones, but the but a fairly accurate ones. And I'm running OSM Europe scenery, so the positions of the roads and the buildings should be fairly accurate to the real deal. So let's check on the descent there. <laughs> Runway 
so we're about 70 miles from the airport. Uh, we are very fast, but we'll be slowing down a little bit more. So about 70 miles out, that's okay to start the descent. Runway 75, clear for visual approach, runway 7, and uh, record final. Runway 75, clear for visual approach, Thank you. Six one eight Alpha Bravo is requesting descent. November uh, six one eight Alpha Alpha Bravo, Roger, descent to fly level one three zero to reach at Dedis. One three zero at Dedis, eight Alpha Bravo. Thank you. So one three zero is set. Altitude select, vertical speed, and we want to go down at about twelve hundred. Maybe 1500 uh, feet. Number yeah. 618 Alpha Bravo, are you able to proceed direct to Colum? Affirmative, we are able. 8 Alpha Bravo. Number 618 Alpha Bravo, drop the same position, proceed direct to Colum and uh, descend to 5000 feet by QNH 1036 at Colum. Direct column to uh, reach 5000 at column QNH 1036, 8 Alpha Bravo. So let's program that in. K O L. Uniform. And there we go, column Slovakia. And we want to select that, direct to. And let's turn over there. We want to pull the power all the way back to flight idle. And we want to descend down to 5000. And I'm going to be doing my descent planning with the GPS here. So we're going to be 5000. Oop, MSL at column. I'm going to be 5,000 there. So it's going to be a pretty aggressive descent. Uh, Starsky 102, continue descent to 2,500 feet. Expect the uh, vector for our approach runway 31. I'm descending to 2,500 feet. I'll be setting the minimums to 200 for an expectation of the ILS there. We can advance the power a touch, a touch more, actually. And let's switch over to IAS so that we keep the speed with the pitch. So transition level is going to be... Well, it's transition at 5,000. Uh, Starsky 102, cruiser riding to 220. Right, oh, there we go. There's some apparently snowy regions here, so it's pretty cold around the area. That's simple season switching the ground textures for me. And we want to be turning on the fasten seat belt signs and start on the descent checklist. So, the descent checklist. Approach briefing. Actually, we don't even have the approach set yet. But we expect ILS 01, so I'm going to be planning for that. So, let's go over the approach for the ILS. So ILS-01, localizer frequency is 109.5, that's set in. Approach course is going to be 09. Glide slope uh, is not important. Airport elevation, that's set in. Pressurization. Mist approach is going to be climbed to distance 4.9. Kilo Echo. 
After VOR, then turn right, right, right to KENDB, climbing 3500. So that's set in there. And we're good on the minimums there. Minimums are going to be for Cat 1, we have good visibility. Two hundred feet. So that's already set in the radar altimeter. So that's okay. And now just monitoring the the descent. So here we need to pull a little bit back on the turbines to maintain the descent there. Or we're also going to be slowing down as we descend. Fifteen thousand feet, and let's continue with the checklist here. So approach briefing is complete. Landing data. We need to set in our landing speeds. So set this down to stall. 107 uh, is going to be our approach. 118 is going to be the V2 speed, which I'm going to be setting that up. Pressurization. Pressurization is set and checked. We're descending. And cabin signs. All right. So that's okay. How are we doing on the descent here? Good. At 10,000 feet, it's going to be lights on. Set the QNH is going to be 1036. Just check that. Yeah, the QNH is 1036. November 618 Alpha Bravo, after passing uh, Column, turn left heading 040, clean line of road, runway 01, so you can establish and descend to 3000 feet. Say again, please, for 8 Alpha Bravo. I didn't get the instructions there correctly. November 6, 1, 8 Alpha Bravo, after passing the column, turn left heading uh, 040, this is 3,000 feet, 3 for hours of road runway 01, report established. After column turn uh, left uh, 040, descent to 3,000 and uh, is, uh, intercept localizer uh, run ILS 01 and report established 8 Alpha Bravo or something along those lines. Alright, so let's check the course here. Actually, we will want to... I'm going to pull back on the turbines there a little more. 12,000. So it's going to be the ILS-01, as I expected. And make sure I have my checklists handy. So the airfield is over at our 10 o'clock. It's over there somewhere. Hopefully. 11,000. I can set that up for now and make sure the GPS shuts up. We want to arm auto feather now. 
And let's look a little bit more outside. The outside air temperature is minus 24. Uh, we have no visu visible precipitation, so that should that should be okay. So coming on, coming up to 10,000, we're going to be taking on the landing lights and the floodlights. So landing lights on, tail floods on. 10,000 feet. Speed restriction is 250, that's okay, and we're only doing 180 on the indicated. So they want us to reach first column and at 5,000, and afterwards descend to 3,000 to intercept the ILS. Which is going to be 1036. We have a little bit of turbulence there. down to minus 1500, make sure the autopilot is taking us down correctly. Going to return the power now to flight idle. Eight thousand feet. Alright, let's uh, set in the pressurization, the pressure altitude, so 1036, 56, 3.059, it's going to be a lot of pressure differential here, 3.059, how are we doing on the descent here? Roughly okay. We should be able to approximately make a column at 5,000. And we're going to keep on descending straight uh, over to 3,000 after that. So I'm going to be setting my view in a little lot closer here. So 040 should take us to the initial approach fix. And I'm going to be switching uh, the GPS over to the approach procedure from there. We got about one minute to column. It's going to be an, an a busy time for myself, so I won't have the time to explain many things. But that's okay. I hope I'll try to overlay. I'll try to overlay subtitles or explanations where applicable. Okay, we're definitely going to make the constraint there. Thank you very much for Okay. Column is 30 seconds away. Once that timer there reaches zero, I'm going to be switching over to heading mode. Heading now. Procedure, I'm going to be activating the approach. Activating that ap the approach and switching the CDI over to lo VOR localizer. Switching the localizer to get the ILS and the front course, as we said, is going to be 009er. 009er. We already have both the, I the localizer and the glide slope alive, so we can arm nav for now. Uh, field should be off to our 11 o'clock. There it is, uh, the field. 
So now descending to 3,000 feet. I'm going to leave the engines on flight idle for now. And uh, once we level off and intercept the localizer, I'll be bringing them up again or we need to descend to, uh, we need to slow down to below 180 knots to drop approach flaps. And I'm going to be starting on the uh, before landing checklist. So altimeters are QNH set and cross checked. Landing and tail lights are on. Nav aids are set. Auto feather is armed. And ice protection is not required. Holding for the landing gear there. There we go. That's the altitude alert. Altitude intercepted. And we need to bleed off speed, so leave the turbines over there at idle. Field is over there, 11 o'clock. Going to be dropping approach flaps now, so I'll need to counter the balloon with my yoke. And increase a lot of power because the drag, because the flaps put out a lot of drag. There we go, localizer intercepted. And we'll give the ATC a call. November 618 Alpha Bravo is established, ILS 01. November 618 Alpha Bravo, uh, wind is from uh, 0330, zero, 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 descents uh, the glide path intercepted, so we switched over to approach. I've put the uh, props to fully forward so we can uh, get maximum power and now going to be coming gear down. Taxi lights on. And I'll be pulling back uh, on the power there, make sure we are below 150 knots before we drop landing flaps. I'm pulling it back a little more. Sync up the heading and set in the go around altitude, which is going to be 3500. There we go. So, landing flaps, counter the balloon with the yoke again. Let the autopilot trim it out. Okay, autopilot is trimmed. And complete the checklist. Landing gear is down three greens. Actually, let me check. I have it on my physical panel here so I can see it. Landing down, gear down, three greens. Taxi lights on, flaps landing. Prop yours fully forward. Yaw damper is coming off. And environmental mode is also coming off. And the uh, go around data is set. So we are for landing checklist complete. And that's the outer marker. And I'm going to be taking the autopilot off now and flying manually. So, my controls. Set my view in a little bit. Where's where it's slowing down to V2 and then to the VRF speed. Um, I have to make uh, continuous trim up adjustments. I'm trying to keep the turbines above the auto feather minimum. But I have to slow down a little bit more because uh, we're still too fast. Primarily looking at the uh, at the primary flight display down there. So I need to trim up. Pulling back turbine power now. Because we are a little fast still. 500. Checked. And now we really need to trim up. Okay, getting on the... We are a little high, so correcting. Middle Minimums. marker. 
checked. Landing. Going now visual with the Pappy. And aiming for the touchdown point there. Gentle flare at the end. Full reverse. So we're not going to be ma able to make that exit there, so never mind with the reverse there. And we're just going to roll it out to the uh, next exit, unless they tell us otherwise. So we can now do the after takeoff, after landing items. So Let's exit over here. Oops, that's actually not a taxiway. Let's take the flaps up. Engine auto ignitions can come off. And environmental mode can come back on. Let's not stop here. November 618 Bravo will come to Cosite. Uh, taxi to stand uh, for your choice uh, via Alpha. Taxi to stand uh, via Alpha 8 Alpha Bravo, thank you. Okay, so let's bring up the taxi map here via Alpha. So they want us to taxi all the way out to the terminal area on the runway, so that's okay. So let's keep the speed up. So that should be the, if I'm not mistaken, let's look over here, that should be the next right, or the one after that. Should be next right, I think. The no, next left. Not the right. There we go. I'm gonna take a little bit of idle beta. Okay. Idle beta on the left. Okay, landing and strobes can come off now. Let's complete the after landing checklist. Flaps are up, trimmers are coming to neutral. Neutral. We're going to be stopping over on stand number. Actually, let me check a good stand number here. Uh, let's try stand number. Oh, there's actually the taxi way we wanted to take actually they wanted to us to taxi over okay let's keep on alpha they wanted us to taxi on alpha uh, I have float uh, 2354 when uh, ready descend to fly uh, 180 to the direct route so they wanted us to taxi on Alpha. And actually let's stop on uh, stand number 5. That's okay. Uh, let's continue with the checklist. Uh, radar, transponder and TCAS is off. Radar is coming off. Engine anti-ice is coming on. Auto ignition is off, ice protection is not required, exterior lights are off, and the decision height selector is going to be coming to zero. So that's the after takeoff, after landing checklist complete. Now let's see. 
should be stand number five just ahead of us. So we can take the taxi light now off. So taxi light is off. And let's stop here. So parking brake is set, turbines coming to low idle. Environmental mode is going off. Pito heat is off. Stall warning heat is coming off. We can turn off rudder boost, turn off the EFIS displays. Avionics actually I'm gonna be giving them a call, so that we're turning off. Hey, Alpha Bravo is on the blocks. Thank you for the ATC. Good night. Hello, I'm Alpha Six One Eight Alpha Bravo. Time is three five plus one close and the specific group turning to the line. Okay, I guess that's it's okay. So avionics off and then. So all the feather off as well. Anti ice is coming off. AC inverters, gens. Let's cancel that message over here and shut down. So condition levers to cut off. Number one. Number two. And feather. Turn off the fasten seat belt signs. Tail flood can come off now as well. Beacon lights coming off. And we can call the GPU to get power. Yeah, there we go, self driving GPU, huh? Okay. External power is coming on. And that's okay, so let's check the turbines whether they're stopped. Turbines are stopped, so we can turn off the we can open the passenger and baggage doors. And let's just do the quick shutdown checklist. Parking brake is set. GPS and radar is off. Standby horizon power is off. Avionics is off. Inverter is off. Auto feather off. External, internal and external lights are. Um, let's keep the internals okay. Uh, battery and generators are off. Uh, well checked, actually. We want to. Yeah, generators are off. Uh, environmental mode is off. ITT. That's just the shutdown check. Shutdown procedure. So. We are good. We can't install the control lock, so unfortunately that's all we can do. Okay, so let's have a look outside. I'm going to be disconnecting from uh, X Squawk Box so that we don't jump around on our screens there. And let's have a look outside the airplane. Okay, so that was a quick flight in the country of Slovakia. And let's do a couple of quick uh, replays, and then we'll uh, then we'll close it out. Thanks, guys.